As you probably know by now, a powerful hurricane just hit the southeast of the United States. In here in Greenville, South Carolina, me and my family were right in the middle of it. Thankfully, me and my family a couple of hours south were safe. Greenville, like a lot of places in South Carolina, was a mess. Lots of downed trees and power lines, and 95% of the town lost power for days. The town was a mess and it's still being cleaned up. The whole area also experienced an incredible amount of rainfall, swelling rivers to a tremendous degree. This is the very swollen waterfall in downtown Greenville, but one area that was hit much more seriously was Western North Carolina. I wanted so bad to go up to Asheville and document things, and I did. I made a short two hour drive up into the mountains to Asheville and then to Hendersonville for a really cool meetup, which I'll talk about later. I arrived in Asheville and parked next to the river and started documenting the damage. I could see a pile of debris laying on a closed bridge, some people working, stuff laying in the street. There's a giant hole in the road in the corner of the intersection. I just started walking around and capturing what I saw. Random things laying around. The trees were full of things draped on the limbs. And here's just one example I saw that day of something stuck on anything that could have something stuck on it. And I began to see so many examples of things that were pushed to the right by a very strong current. Here we have a downed light post and a car left on a sidewalk. And I believe the marking on the car here is something that's left by rescue workers as they move through and look for people. So I continued to move down the road towards this railroad bridge. This ended up being a wild spot because this bridge has a lot of supports which caught a lot of the debris as it moved through. So what was left behind is these large piles of debris with all sorts of things in it. And it was really wild to me to see larger objects like the shipping container dropped off here. On the other side of the bridge, I had a very stunning perspective of those piles of debris in between every arch. This scene was striking to me because of what appears to be an airstream left behind on the left-hand side. It was really interesting to me the variety of objects that I found, and I couldn't help but wonder where they came from. And one of the things I noticed everywhere was that vertical objects caught stuff that was floating in the water. Everything had stuff wrapped around or piled in front of it. At one point, I looked to the left and saw what appeared to be a school bus that had been thrown into the side of a warehouse. I moved closer and realized that it wasn't a school bus, but it was a trailer that was school bus themed that had indeed been thrown into the side of a warehouse. This was incredible to me. This to me feels like the images you see on TV after an F5 tornado goes through a town. As I was walking around this warehouse and capturing it, I came across two men. One was an elderly man, and the other was a younger man who I spoke to. He told me that this was his job. Was. He didn't have a job to go back to anymore, and he didn't seem to have a script about what was next. And if you're wondering, he respectfully declined a portrait. We spoke a bit, and he showed me a water line 10 feet up on the side of the building, and he also told me that the elderly man was the owner of the business. So at this point, I turned around, moved back up the road. I captured that car a bit more from various different angles, including a close-up. I saw a Chinook helicopter flying over, incredible machines, and then moved back up to the other side of the initial bridge that I saw when I first parked my car. Here you can see all of the things that got caught up on that side of the bridge. This is interesting, a shipping container that has been bent inward, presumably from the current and or it smashing into the bridge. Here you can see how it's wedged into position at a diagonal angle. This heap was interesting because it actually had a hole in the middle of it, it was a bit of an arch. I then looked over and saw a, a large building with a collapsed roof. This is either near or in what's called the River Arts District. I'm not exactly sure where it starts, but a lot of these buildings house local businesses, and it's incredibly sad to see all of that investment washed away. This was an interesting scene, a bunch of shirts laying out on the sidewalk. I'm not exactly sure where they were collected from. I'm guessing people found them about and started putting them all in one spot. I also noticed this scene, and now diagonal shack with somebody looking inside. So then I hopped into my car and drove to another spot of interest. I remembered seeing this video going around of a flooded area and a Wendy's. So I decided to see if I could go find that Wendy's. I picked one on the map that looked like the right spot and went there. And it was the right one. And here's that Wendy's in the foreground that had water up to the roof. And this one, you can see the layer of mud that was left behind everywhere. I then moved down into the area that was flooded and came across a FedEx office that was right next to that Wendy's. I mean, look at this. You can tell that the water just turned this whole store into a washing machine. This is one of the more incredible things I saw that day. And one thing you would also see everywhere is abandoned cars. This one was right side up in a parking lot, but you can find plenty of videos of cars that had been thrown around like toys. All over the place was a new peculiar mess. 
I really got a sense of the monumental amount of work that had to be done just in the areas that I visited in Asheville. Here's that Wendy's with more of that mud. This is a shot of an auto repair shop that thankfully looks like it's going to be able to operate again. But this is an example of one of the many businesses that have probably been here for years and they might have a lot of work cut out for them. And, and something I noticed was that the whole town was buzzing with people who were just trying to put the pieces back together one step at a time. So even though I could have spent hours and hours in Asheville capturing all the corners, I had to hop back into my car and get to Hendersonville. And Hendersonville was something that provided a hopeful end to a dark day. This is three charter buses that were full of water that my church donated to the area. They, along with a lot of military personnel, unloaded these buses and stored the water in this giant warehouse, along with a lot of other supplies that was coming in. I had arranged to be here so that I could document this for my church. And also, somewhere in that endless water was some that my wife had dropped off at the church that morning. It was really amazing to see such a big contribution, and it's a great example of the power of community on a small and large scale. And also, I will add a link below to somewhere where you can give if you would like to. But with all of that said, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. God bless.